Hi, I'm Ed Amoroso from Tag Cyber, and I'm here with my very good friend, Mark Weatherford, who is the Chief Cybersecurity Strategist at VArmor. Hi, Mark. Good morning, Ed. You're here in New York City today. Came here to see you. You, you do that Washington, New York uh, trip pretty often. Right? Uh, not as often as I used to, but, uh, but you know, the Acela to DC is just, I, I, it's like two, three hours of free work time. It is a nice way to go. Now, let's talk cybersecurity a little okay. bit. Now, you're an example of somebody who's constantly talking to executives and board members and senior government officials. Um, question, is there maybe a better way to do it? It seems like we're not getting our message across, particularly with board members. Any, any thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I, so I picked up your, your uh, thread a couple of years ago about um, talking truth to power. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that may be a little bit of a, a dramatic way of saying it. But I think for the longest time, um, we as security professionals have accepted the responsibility for security in our organizations. We've kind of let our executives and our boards off the hook. Mm -hmm. um, and really, the, the time has come that that has to change. We have to push that responsibility back up the stack because ultimately, you know, we can only do so much. Um, and, you know, without, without relying on fear, uncertainty, and doubt, the executives need to understand, you know, that, that their, um, their input into this process is the only way that we can be successful mm -hmm. at our jobs. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's up to board members and executives to really up their game? Like a, a lot of them would be able to talk to you and I about finance and marketing in a second, right? And they have deep understanding there. But for tech and certainly cyber, Maybe, are, are they not doing their homework? Do you think they need to up it a little bit? I, I go back and I, I agree, agree completely. You know, I think we've let them off the hook. We've, we've fallen back and said, okay, this stuff's so sophisticated, it's so complex that you would never understand it. When in fact, you're exactly right. You know, they deal with other kinds of risk, yeah. very complex risk every single day. They're smart enough. Right. We just haven't made them take the responsibility for it. Well, I hope people take you up on the suggestion. I, I do think we've made it too easy, a lot, a lot of baby talk. There's actually a bill in the legislature right now uh, that that's gonna require publicly traded companies mm. um, to have somebody on the board who has cybersecurity experience or have cybersecurity experience available to the board member. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll go a long way to, to solving this this issue perhaps. Now you've been doing some pushing through a, a foundation, uh, advisory board of a, a very cool sounding foundation that you're part of. I, I never get the name right. Tell, tell me about the foundation and, and the work that you guys so do. So it's, it's a think tank in Washington mm -hmm. DC called the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Wow, that's a and, good name. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. And they, you know, they have like, like most think tanks, they have a number of projects mm -hmm. going at any one time. But I got asked to be on an advisory board for Cyber Enabled Economic Warfare, wow. uh, CEEW. Um, and it's, it's, you know, w we just kind of advise them uh, as they are working on policies mm. and working on issues related to this. But uh, it's, a, it's a very cool concept, um, really around how um, governments can shape the economic policy of other uh, of wow. other governments wow. through cybersecurity, wow. um, and I mean conceptually that makes sense. I mean if you think back, you know the uh, the event in 2007, April 2007, mm -hmm. when where the Russians attacked Estonia, mm -hmm. um, you know in in a very short order they brought the government to their knees, um, and that is really a kind of a classic case of CEEW. Mm -hmm. um, so. I think we, uh, it's something that, that certainly is worthwhile studying because uh, of the implications that it could have on the United States. Mm. Um, a lot of times we treat, um, in, treat incidents as individual incidents when perhaps we should be thinking them in a, in a bigger yeah. spectrum where they're part of a, of a more wide ranging um, engagement you know, to shape the economy. So let me put you on the spot. Do you think in our, um, in our cyber world, the defense will ever catch up to the offense? Or are we always going to be behind to just stay? Boy, I tell you what. I hope I've, the answer is, <laughs> is at least maybe. Okay, maybe, but, but probably <laughs> not. You know, I, I, like you, I've thought a lot about yeah, this. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just so darn easy to be 
offense, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, t hate to sound cliche, but they only have to be right one time. You're right. And, uh, true. and, you know, we have to have all of our ducks in a row every single day, 24, seven, 365. Mm. And so it's just probably not, but, but I think the, the opportunity for us is that while we, na we, we may miss things every now and then, our ability to be resilient and recover and get back in business quickly is really the, the measure of a good security company That's a good point. That's a good point. Resilience and kind of keeping it going, so. Well, listen, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, Great I'm to happy see to you. be here. And Always we'll, happy uh, to be in New York. Well, one of the next times you're back, we'll come and we'll do uh, another chat. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Ed. And we'll see you next time.